I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at the Amazing Spider-Man issue number 29, a tie into the Secret Empire event. What happened to Peter Parker while the United States was taken over? Well, let's hop on in together and find out. So, as we join the comic, our hero is on a Meet the Press-style news show in London, attempting to answer for everything that's been going wrong with Parker Industries recently. Be it the webware that failed during Clone Conspiracy, or Parker Industries losing its major S.H.I.E.L.D. contract and backing a coup in a major Eastern Bloc country. Needless to say, Pete himself is in a little hot water right now. And I mean, wow, a failure New York businessman being forced to actually answer for everything he's done wrong? Phew, this really is a comic book fantasy, isn't it? Think of it, if it was real life, Peter Parker could just spend the whole interview making fart noises, walk off, and then still win public office. At first, the interview is actually going pretty good. Pete has all the right answers, but then the events of Secret Empire start happening. First, there's a massive Chitauri wave up in space. Then the Masters of Evil all assault New York. Peter desperately wants to leave, go back home to New York and help out with the fight, but it's Anne-Marie who tries to talk him into staying, saying that people at Parker Industries, people whose livelihoods count on Peter, need him here and now, and he can do just as much good as a CEO as he can in colorful spandex. It takes him a very short amount of time, however, to get into his Spider-Man costume. The plan is simple, head to Parker Industries London HQ, grab a spider jet or some sort of flying device and make it back home in time for the fight, only the night crowd at Parker Industries isn't the usual group, as the night crew has already been invaded by Hydra, which leads to a big old fight with Spider-Man. What's interesting about this is that Spider-Man still thinks of Hydra as the joke flunkies that they used to be. And, I mean, they're not wrong. Hydra was basically a joke right up until they stopped being a joke. With the henchmen dealt with, Peter makes it to his office, where he sees the true mastermind behind all of this, Otto Octavius, the superior octopus, complete with fresh new young clone body. What's truly compelling about this meeting, though, is neither man really wants to fight the other right now. They've been inside each other's minds, seen their memories, seen their friends, walked a mile in each other's shoes. In fact, Spider-Man offers Octavius one a hell of a sweet olive branch, saying, hey, if you help me defend New York right now when everything is said and done, I swear I'll put in a good word with the Avengers so you can get a fresh start at a new life. Oh, but it's not a new life Otto wants, it's the life he left behind, the life that he built well in the body of Peter Parker, namely Parker Industries. As Otto puts it, all of the company's success have actually been a result of him, either founding the company in the first place, manipulating the stock market as the living brain, or, and this is my favorite, the webware, the one product that Peter Parker actually does take sole ownership of. Yeah, turns out he actually ripped off the Web Warriors communicator subconsciously without even knowing it. Otto wants Parker Industries, but moreover than that, he wants to ruin Peter Parker's good name. You remember that big magic dark hole dome that's over Manhattan right now? Well, footage from New York has been doctored by Hydra and Otto to make it seem that the actual dome is emanating from the New York offices of Parker Industries, which means Peter Parker's good name is getting dragged through the mud right now as being a Hydra co-conspirator. This ends up leading to a huge fight between Auk and Spidey, a fight that Octopus actually has the upper hand in. Again, remember, Otto lived inside Peter's head for a bit. He knows all of his tricks, all of his gadgets, and has a counter for each one. Feeling the fight turning against him, Spider-Man attempts to make a tactical retreat and make it to New York to help out all the same. He then ends up getting shot down by missiles, seemingly falling to his death. Otto then detonates the building to cover his tracks and walks away triumphantly, saying that this is just part one of his plan. Next, he plans to woo and Marie getting her back into his good graces as the comic ends. So that was Amazing Spider-Man issue number 29, and overall it was one hell of a time, but even if you're not taking part in Secret Empire right now, I think it works completely well just as a Spider-Man story. In fact, after being thoroughly disappointed by the last couple arcs in this Amazing Spider-Man run, I gotta say they won me back here. Hats off to Dan Slott, but also hats off to Christos Gage as well, I really heard his voice in this. Honestly, part of me feels even if there wasn't a Secret Empire event going on right now, they would have told this story anyway, and probably probably in much the same way, too. I mean, everything from clone conspiracy to this, it's all to hype up the return of Dr. Octopus, and it's a pretty great return, made even more interesting by the 
fact that he's clearly part of the Hydra cause right now, but he's also pursuing his own personal agenda, probably without Cap and Hydra's knowledge. It also answers the big hang logistical question of why Spider-Man isn't taking part in the main Secret Empire book right now. Uh, this, this is why. He was out of the country. Overall, I thought this one was pretty solid. I give this one an 8 out of 10, and I'm definitely interested to see where they're going to take it next. So, there you go, everyone. There's your Secret Empire tie-in for the week. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're still here, why not check out some of these other videos I've worked on? I swear you'll enjoy. Then, of course, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to all my social media pages that allow you to keep up to date. If you like this book and want to pick up it or anything else in trade, you can also find a link to Book Depository. Not only will you get a great deal on buying comics, but if you use my link, you'll also be helping support me in the channel as a small amount goes to support me. So, there you go. I've been Cape Jewel. Thanks so much for watching.